Okay, let's take a quick look at the uh, design of the uh, the uh, Tiny SA. A lot of people think that it's just a nano VNA, just with different software, but it's an entirely new design. And so let's take a look at it. And so there's a wiki page. If you go to uh, tinysa.org, you can find the wiki page and read all about it. So I'm not going to bother you reading all of this. But it, uh, basically, it's a spectrum analyzer that goes between uh, 100 kilohertz and 350 megahertz. And then there's a kind of a hack. It's a little bit uh, lesser quality. You can get from uh, 240 megahertz to 960 megahertz. So the low input on the Tiny SA does this 350, and then the high input does this uh, 960 megahertz. And uh, then there's uh, uh, bandpass filters, resolution bandpass filters. Those are DSP implemented. We'll see how that works. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at. So if you go to uh, some of the pages from the design team, you'll find uh, actual schematics of the uh, of the device, and uh, so you can look to see what it will, how it's how it's wired up and everything. But I, I've made a, a a simple block diagram here. Okay, so let's. Uh, Let's zoom in on that. So uh, the low input comes in, and the first thing it encounters is an LC um, low pass filter. Okay, so this is going to, uh, they, and the schematic it says uh, 200 megahertz low pass filter values, but I think it's probably not what's on the board, but there is some low pass filter. Uh, to basically kill everything above 350 megahertz. Um, you want to be able to reject everything so it doesn't get mixed in. So if you're building a spectrum analyzer for 350 megahertz maximum, uh, then you want to cut out everything else. So that's the first thing is this low pass filter. So the next section is a uh, attenuator, a step attenuator, and it's uh, 0 to 31 dB. It's digitally, digitally implemented. And then it comes into a first converter. So this is an external mixer. And I believe it is a, uh, uh, oh, a mini circuits. I think that it's a mini circuits part. And it's run by a, a, a local oscillator. So the local oscillator uh, mixes everything down to a 433.9 megahertz first IF. Okay, so the, the first IF is 433.9 megahertz, so it's above above 350. Uh, and then it goes through a first filter, and this is implemented as uh, some off-the-shelf uh, saw parts. So a saw filter followed by a saw filter. Uh, they're the same, the same saw filter that was found on one of the... Um, uh, one of the RF demo kits for the Nano VNA, so those parts must be all over the place. So they, they reused that part, uh, 433.9, and they've cascaded two together to give uh, better rejection. And uh, then it goes into a second conversion, and that gets converted down to 870 kilohertz, I believe. Uh, I believe I've read that somewhere in a wiki. Um, and so there's another oscillator that mixes it down, and then it goes into an ADD converter, and it's all software from then on. Now, uh, this all happens inside a, a chip, okay? So this mixer and this oscillator and AD, this is all part of one chip. So it's a very, a very fancy chip. Let me, let me show you a block, block diagram of that. Okay. So uh, it has a lot going on in it. So it has an input and a mixer. And then that mixer uh, gets uh, run by a LO. There, there's a, a VCO inside. And so it has its own VCO, it has its own mixer, it has its own A to D, and then it has a whole bunch of digital modem stuff. Um, it has, uh, I think it has a temperature controlled uh, oscillator inside. It, it's a really, really fancy chip. And so it's got all this stuff going on. Now, they like this chip so much, they use two of them. Uh, so. Uh, this local oscillator for the first is is run by one of these chips, and then the second one is run by one of these chips. So the first chip is used, only uses the VCO section, okay? It doesn't use any of this other section, they just use the VCO section. Um, 
And uh, this also allows you to output some other things too. So you can program it for some GPI, GPIO pins. And so this first oscillator is also used to generate the master clock for the microprocessor. Uh, and so there's no crystal need for the microprocessor to run directly off of this. And then there's an, another one. So I think there's an internal 30, 30 megahertz that's generated and an internal 48 megahertz that's generated. And some people complain that those are the sources of some of the local noise inside the machine. So crosstalk and spurs in inside of the tiny SA are due to those two signals. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounds, sounds about right. Um, so there's these two chips. So uh, that, is this, that is the tiny SA. Uh, low pass filter, attenuator, uh, first conversion filter, second conversion, and then goes into the A to D, which then uh, adds another filter and uh, uh, more processing, right? So the resolution bandwidth filters are after the A to D. There's, so they're either uh, DSP implemented or software implemented, however you want to think of it. Uh, they're, they're over here in, uh, in digital land, so they're not in analog land, they're in digital land. Now on the wiki site, um, there's a whole bunch of information on the specifications for the thing, uh, which I've been trying to verify. There's also a section on what the resolution filters look like, okay? And so they do have funny shapes. Uh, this is the 600 kilohertz filter, the 300 kilohertz filter, the um, 100 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. And the three kilohertz, uh, and then something else. Let's see. Or am I reading it upside down? Oh, this is the this is the ten kilohertz. It's on the other page. This is the ten kilohertz, and this is the three kilohertz. Okay. So those are the filters, and they're a little bit flat topped. You can see those filters are flat top, and I think that's the reason that you see the flat topping of. Uh, like side lobes and stuff or AM modulation and stuff on the SA. They kind of have a flat top, and I think it's due to the shape of these filters. Anyway, uh, so again, uh, the Tiny SA is not a Nano. And it doesn't act like a Nano. It doesn't calibrate like a Nano. It, it, everything that you know about Nanos, ignore, because uh, they're just completely different on the on the Tiny SA, and it is a complete new design from the ground up. Now they did steal which processor they use and which display they use, and maybe the battery circuits and things like that. But uh, the real guts of the Spectrum Analyzer, it's completely new.